Radioactive decay is a random process where a nucleus loses energy by emitting radiation. Radioactive nuclei might decay by emitting alpha particles, beta particles, or gamma rays to become more stable. A radioactive sample will begin with a number of radioactive nuclei, and then over time, they will decay so that there are fewer number of radioactive nuclei left within the sample. The graph of the number of nuclei against time shows us the same shape as the graph of activity against time. And looking at the two graphs, we can see that there's some sort of exponential relationship between uh, the number of nuclei and time and the activity against time. So let's derive the corresponding decay equation. In nuclear physics, the activity is defined as the number of disintegration per second or you can also say it's the number of unstable nuclei that decay per second within a sample. And that's why we can write the activity A is equal to delta N over delta T. That's a change in the number of nuclei in a given time. The more radioactive nuclei you have within a sample, the higher the activity is. And that's why we can say that activity is proportional to the number of nuclei. We also know that A is equal to delta N over delta T. So let's replace activity with this new expression here. Instead of keeping the proportionality sign, I'm going to replace it with a constant lambda. Let this be the decay constant, which needs a negative sign in front of it to show that the number of nuclei in the sample is actually reducing over time. We will now integrate both sides of this equation, and I'll take dt, or delta t, to the right-hand side to separate it from delta n. And this n here needs to hang out on the left-hand side with delta n. So taking it to this side, it becomes 1 over n. Integrating 1 over n is just a natural log of n. And on the right-hand side, Integrating a constant by dt means that we just have to multiply this constant by t. But we also have to add c to it, where c is a new constant, and we call this the constant of integration. At the moment, we have an indefinite integral, and we don't know what the constant c is. To figure out what this constant is, we need to set some initial conditions. But think about this, when we first got our sample of radioactive substance, that is when time is equal to zero. And at that instant in time, we have the maximum number of undecayed radioactive nuclei. So let's call this n subscript zero. This is the initial number of nuclei that we have. Some people prefer to call this n sub zero, but I know that uh, others, especially in the UK, they call it n naught. So when t is zero, the number of nuclei at that moment in time is the same as the initial number of radioactive nuclei. So n becomes n sub zero. We can now put it back into our indefinite integral to get natural log of n is equal to the negative of the decay constant times time plus the natural log of n sub zero. But this doesn't quite look like our exponential equation just yet. Before we do the next step, I want to just remind you of two log rules. Rule number one, when you subtract two logs, that's the same as dividing one by the other. Rule number two, to undo a natural logarithm, apply the exponential function. Let's take log of n sub zero to the left hand side so that we can apply rule number one. This bracket now becomes log of n over n0. Using rule number 2, we can now undo this log by applying exponents to both sides of the equation. So here we finally arrive at n is n sub 0 e to the negative decay constant times time. This is the exponential decay equation. And since activity is proportional to n, we can also write this expression replacing n with a. Now I'm going to take you one step further to derive an equation for half-life using our exponential equation. Half-life is the time required for the number of radioactive nuclei in a sample to reduce by half the original amount. So all we have to do is define time for when n is the initial amount divided by 2. Let's cancel these two guys. 
Now undo the exponents by logging both sides of the equation. And this is exactly the reverse of what we were doing before. Now the next trick is going to simplify our equation uh, where we have to take the negative sign to the left hand side of our equation. And that's because when we have a negative log, we can get rid of the minus sign by flipping the fraction. And remember, we're trying to find an expression for half-life. And the symbol for half-life is commonly written as t subscript a half. And here's the final form of our equation relating half-life to the decay constant. Well, thanks for watching this video. Uh, this is just a quick and easy method of deriving the half-life equation and also the exponential decay equation. Be sure to subscribe for more physics.